This is the BBC Light Programme. Tribute to Robert Farnan, composer, arranger and orchestra leader. Robert Farnan was born in Toronto, Canada in 1917, the second of three sons born to a Welsh mother. He started playing drums at the age of 11 in a band run by his brother Brian. However, Bob saw his instrument as the orchestra, and he visualised music not in terms of one instrument, but of a complete combination. He decided that the only way to write satisfactorily for every instrument in an orchestra was to be able to play them all. So he did, by the age of 14. By the time Bob was 17, he was playing lead trumpet and writing all the choral arrangements for the Percy Faith Orchestra on the Canadian Broadcasting Company. This was the first chance he had had to prove that his interest was creative as well as interpretive. After all, he had had a sound musical training under Louis Weissman, a former pupil of the great Johann Strauss. His scores were also used by Paul Whiteman and Andre Kostelanitz, but sadly these were all for radio broadcasts and no recordings exist of those early sessions. During 1937, Percy Faith went to the USA and Bob was offered the leadership of the CBC Orchestra, which he accepted. In 1944, Captain Robert Farnan and his Canadian band of the AEF landed in England to play for the compatriots. The BBC broadcasts of the service bands were very popular and anyone based in London during those dark times would no doubt have fond recollections of the broadcasts by Bob's Canadian band, the Miller Army Band, George Malacrino's orchestra in Khaki and the Sam Donoghue US Navy Band. There's never been a period like this in British music and it remains one of the few things for which we can thank the war. We invite you to reminisce as Captain Bob Farnan and the orchestra blend a pattern of three great song hits woven for all time into your wartime memories. For example, where were you when you first heard... the years and the years into history, a rhythm did he burst in the scene and spread like an epidemic. Thank you. 
During the First World War, perhaps no other song held quite the same place in the hearts of the world as did Till We Meet Again. And who, who can forget this? Its counterpart in World War II. Around this time, Bob married and Mr. and Mrs. Farnan set up a home in a flat in Earl's Court. At the end of the war, Bob began his civilian career in the UK with a series of radio broadcasts entitled Journey into Melody. Those broadcasts were a great success and had Farnan fans making comparisons with the likes of Stordal and Rose, Costellanitz and Gould. Bob at this time was also doing some arranging for Ted Heath and Geraldo. When the Geraldo Orchestra went to the United States in 1947, Bob took over during Geraldo's absence. Bob became involved in the British film industry after the war. Two notable films for which he wrote the music were Spring in Park Lane and Midnight in Mayfair, both of which starred Anna Nagel and were produced by her husband, Herbert Wilcox. Around 1948, Bob signed a contract with Chapels, the music publishers, and they still to this very day publish his compositions. Bob estimates that almost 500 pieces of his work have been published by them to date. The first piece appearing in their catalogue dates back to 1949 and is on a single-sided Chapel 78, number C259, and is titled Willie the Whistler. It's played by the Queen's Hall Light Orchestra, conducted by Charles Williams. <laughs> Thank you. 
A number of Bob's mood or theme pieces have become very successful over the years. Some of those pieces are Jumping Bean, Portrait of a Flirt, Journey into Melody and A Star is Born. Here's a montage of some of Bob's work in that area. <laughs> Two pieces of music written by Bob became favourites of mine long before I even knew of him. These were the sports themes used by Melbourne radio stations 3XY and 3DB. In those days most newscasts used martial music as a theme and sports programs used a sports march. The All Sports March and Grandstand were used respectively by 3XY and 3DB and here they are now back to back a memory of the great days of radio.
of the stars Bob arranged for in the 1950s was the English sweetheart of the war years, Vera Lynn. Here she is with his arrangement of How Can I Leave You? Bob and his orchestra provide the backing together with the Mayfair Singers. <laughs> In June 1962, Bob arranged and conducted the Sinatra reprise album, Sinatra Sings Great Songs from Great Britain. This album was recorded on June 12th, 13th and 14th, 1962, at the CTS Studios in Bayswater, London. Sinatra was in the UK for a series of concerts on behalf of children's charities. The album is interesting in that it is the only one Sinatra recorded outside the USA. It comprises, with one exception, material by British songwriters only, and it was the sole meeting of the greatest of all the male singers and arranger Farnan. The original vinyl release of this recording became quite hard to get, rare even. Then in 1993, Reprise, now a subsidiary of Time Warner, released a digitally remastered CD. From that recording, here is Sinatra with Farnan and Ivan Novello's We'll Gather Lilacs. We'll gather lilacs in the spring again and walk together down an English lane until our hearts have learned 
to sing again when you come home once more and in the evening by the fire lights glow you'll hold me close and never let me go your eyes will tell me all I want to know when you come home once more Come on.